Hi witches, welcome back to Pagan Pathways with Jessica for another DIY video. This time though, I am doing a collaboration with Cindy from that tarot lady on some witchy items. And this week we're doing witch bells. So I hope you love this DIY. I do love creating them. I will show you a few real quick, but then make sure you go check out Cindy's page as well so you can check out her version of witch bells. You can never have enough different ideas so that you can create your own. Anyway, so here's the one that we are creating today. Now, these witch bells are pretty long, but I love them. And then I have this set that I've made recently. My favorite set. These have actual purple amethyst stones on them. And I did some macrame there at the top. And then this last set that I do really like too. So if you're interested in these witch bells that I've created, you can go to my Etsy shop. I'll leave a link down in the description. And again, make sure you go check out Cindy's page. And let's go ahead and get crafting witches. The first thing we need to do is make one of those circles, which I have one, but I'm going to show you how to make it. Okay, now we're going to take this thicker wire I have. This, this is a very nice stiff wire. Now, if you don't have this wire, you could use clothes hanger. You could get um, a thinner wire if you want to, but I prefer this thicker wire. A clothes hanger is about the same thickness, and so it would work just fine. Then I'm just going to wrap this around my cup here to get my circle shape. No. I didn't use the cup for much except for just to help me shape this out. And then we'll just take the needle nose pliers and fold it over and under it. This is not easy. I'm not going to lie and say it is. It is hard to work. The thicker the wire is, the harder it is to work with, but then the stiffer the item that you're trying to do. And I might have actually cut this just a little too short for this large of a circle, which I do that sometimes as well. <laughs> Now what I like to do is cut off this excess step that's standing up the top. All right, now I like to just take my clip, my needle nose pliers and flatten it as much as I can. All right, so there is our circle. Pain in the ass, but worth it. This one is a little larger, so depending on how large you want your ring at the top is how long your circle will be, um, or how wide your circle will be. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this um, cotton rope, and I believe this one came from Dollar Tree. It might've been um, Ace, I can't remember, but this is 100% cotton like to use that, and cut off the three very large, long strings. And then we're going to stick them together like this and tie at the top. Now, the reason we're doing this is because then I'm going to, I just rigged this thing up, <laughs> my twine rope, to hold it for me because now we're just going to braid it. Now, this is time consuming, but... It's just a braid, so it's not like intricate. And I got my rope all twisted up here, so we're gonna get it undone. All right, now that I got it all undone, I'm just gonna start braiding every so often. And I would make this kind of tight, which I didn't do, so let me back up here. 
yeah, I like the braid to be nice and tight so it don't come off loose. Plus, we're gluing it around the top of the ring and we want it to be And I'm not going to lie and tell you that braiding this long of a rope isn't kind of a freaking pain, because it is, but the end result will be worth it. So you're just going to braid the whole length. All right, now I'm to the end, but I didn't braid it all the way down because I want to create that knot like I did at the top. So we're just going to do the same thing I did up there and pull them all through just to make a simple knot. That's it. So the braid is all done. And again, this did create a pretty long rope, hopefully long enough because I don't measure anything. Measuring would be easier. Now, after we just put in that nice little knot there, we are going to cut it off. But first we're going to go up about, I don't know, an inch maybe and start gluing it over the reason for that is because you can't really glue down the knot and get a nice solid um, and I like to start from the inside so I just put some glue on here now this is hot glue but you can use whatever glue you want the hot glue does hold though because the rope sticks to each other And I just send or feed it through the loop every time. And before I put glue down, I try to make sure it's nice and flat. Now, when you take this, now remember when I cut extra off? I did that so that I could glue this down more, but this time I'm going to apply the glue to the rope. Just like that, okay? And I know that's not perfect, but don't worry, when we get to the other end and we cut it off, we're going to go right over the top of where that one started. So just keep going until you get your whole loop uh, covered in the rope. All right, we're making pretty good progress, and I am putting glue on the whole thing, just so I, I didn't know if I said that already, but making it clear that's what I'm doing. Um, I think I am going to have enough rope. If you do uh, run out, don't worry, because again, remember how it's flat? You could just braid a little more and put it on. I will show you how to do that when we get to the end. All right, we're coming to the end here, and I am just going to... Add a little bit of hot glue right there go around one more time and then actually I think I will I was trying to show you the best way to do this there's not really a best way so I think I will just put that right there hold it up because I want to cut it right here but I quickly want to tie this because I could use this for a different project maybe and I don't like to waste. So to keep the braid in place, we do that. And then to finish this off, again, the glue goes on the rope. You're going to hold it down. If your fingers are sensitive, you might want those finger protectors because we really want this glued on. All right. So there's the first part of our ring. And as you've seen in some of the other ones I did, I used ribbon, but today this one's going to be twine because I got these uh, beads I want to use with it, and I like the brown and white together. These are little owls. Um, I, I think I bought these at Hobby Lobby. I've had them for several years. They were $5.99, but I promise you I used a 50% off, so I got them for $3, and they are glass, all of them, and I'll show you how to apply those, but first we're going to now add twine. Now I have, of course, that thicker twine, which I'm not going to be using, and then these two different sizes, but I think I'm going to go with the thinnest twine. So I want to go back to where that started, so it's right here. And we're going to apply just a little bit of glue to get us started. Now, this one we do glue it down too, but we don't put as much on it as we do 
a rope. You, it, it's not necessary. And then the next thing you got to do is try to judge how much you're going to need because it's hard to get this. Now, this is from Dollar Tree, and this is also from Dollar Tree. They do have twine in a couple different places, and I go to a lot of Dollar Trees. So, yeah, you just have to see what's available in your area. Walmart sells twine as well in different sizes, and I think it's very inexpensive there as well you know, just like Dollar Tree. So when we wrap this, we're going to go at an angle. And I do that because I think it looks better than just going in a straight circle. And you're going to wrap it tight. So you're going to be holding it just like I'm doing here. Now I realize on the camera, you probably cannot see the twine as well as you can in person. So let me get it just a little bit closer. Okay. You see how I'm going in an angle here? And I'm just going to keep doing that. Try to space them evenly. If you don't, that's okay. But the more even you put it in. Now, I am going to add just a little bit of hot glue to this one before I go around. And see, it's just more sporadic than um, with the rope. Like, there's hot glue around the entire rope. But there isn't with the twine. So... Just keep going till you get all the way to the end and then glue it down and we'll, we'll go to our next step after that's finished. All right, here we are to the end and I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue to finish it off. We're going to go right up on the first one we started with, glue it on, cut it off. Now, if you did what I did and didn't get enough glue on there, just add a little more and push it down. So that is what earring looks like. Very simple. Now I'm going to quickly, and you can do this beforehand, gently because of the cotton rope, but I don't like all those little frays on there. So and ta-da. I think that looks better. All right, now, the next thing we're going to do is to decide how we want to design this. And I am going to put my ropes on the thicker end, you know, like where I crossed it over. That way it kind of covers and conceals that. And I'm going to be doing macrame with this. No. So now I need to decide how long I want it to be and then cut my ropes. We will be doing five of these as well as five of this thicker twine, I think. Mm. See, this is the thing. It's decisions. What do I want to do here? I think I will go with the thicker twine to hang down. And when you cut these, when you decide how long you want them to be, and I would make them longer than what you think you want them to be, just simply because it's easier to cut it off. You're going to double it up. So I think that this is probably the desired length I'm going to go with. So, oops, that's a little bit too long. So when I check it, still maybe just a little too long. Okay, that's probably better. So I'm going to cut it off just like that. And now I'm going to cut five of these this length is where I, what I'm going with, okay? So I need five of these, and then I also will need, um, I think, seven of these. And the same length, and I will show you how to put those on. So let's get them all cut off, and then I'll show you how to apply them. All right, now that I have all my string cut, I'm going to find my middle point here, and this is what you call a lark's head knot. So you double your string like you see me here then you put the legs right on through and then pull it tight now before I pull it tight though to keep my hold the where I want it and to make this easier for myself oops I'm gonna good thing I didn't do anything yet because I want this right on that fat part there we go all right you can set yours up however you want to but the knots 
move too much for my liking. So I'm going to add just a little teeny drop of hot glue. I'm going to get everything in place and then I'm going to pull it tight. I'm going to give that a second to dry. And that's what it looks on the front side. Yep, that's just called a Lark's Head Knot. Very simple. You can skip the hot glue if you want to, but I prefer it, so that's what I'm doing. It's just not thick enough, so like I said, I'm going to go ahead and add, and then I burned all the strings. I will add those a last four. Again, that'll be one more each white and one more each brown for a total of eight. Wait, two, four, eight of the brown and seven of the white. All right, that is much better. All right, so I wanted to do a little macrame. And like on one of them, I only did macrame with the white, but since the twine will work, I'm going to go ahead and use it with the macrame knot as well. So to do this, you take your two middle strands and then one on each side, you put it over the loop that you're going to be doing on this side, hold it there, you go under all of them. And now you're going to pull it tight. I want it right up against there. Now you're going to do the same with the opposite side. So get your two in the middle. This side goes over the top this side goes under everything and then you're going to pull it tight now we're going to go to the next set and you're going to do this all the way across this is a little more time consuming and you can skip this part if you like but I want it on here, so that's what I've decided to do. And again, this is yours, so you can do it however you like. I'm gonna show you this one more time where I'm going up and under. This is easier for me to do, not in slow motion, but I mean, I know some people don't know how to tie these knots, so I just wanted to show you what I was doing here. After this one, I will get the rest of them done and then I'll show you the next step. If you see, I am pushing the knot up because I would like it to be up at the top. So, now. You can do all kinds of knots. There's tons of tutorial videos for macrame. I um, just am doing the basic knots. I'm not an expert. But you can make all kinds of pretty stuff with macrame. And we're going to go all the way across. Pretty soon you'll see a pattern emerging. This is not up as tight as I want it to be. Okay, there we go. I'm, I try to make them even as possible. So, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get the rest of them tied and I'll come back and show you the final look of that. And then we'll move on with the next. All right, so I wasn't thinking clearly when I started putting this on. I had to add another white one on this end to make it uneven. There has to be an uneven number for the macrame part. I don't know why I always forget that. Um, you could, instead of adding one on, you could just take off the end pieces. No matter what though, there has to be an uneven number for the macrame knot that I've chosen to work with to work. Now, I'm gonna stop at these knots because for whatever reason I just 
can't come up with what I want to do next. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding some beads. And I'm going to start on the outside and work my way in. I have some wooden beads that I picked up. I can't even remember where. I've had them for years. I'm going to guess probably Hobby Lobby or Walmart or somewhere. <laughs> Walmart, probably Walmart, I'm going to guess. Walmart does sell bags of beads, wooden beads, all different kinds. And make this exact one. So give me a second and I will show you the next step. All right, so um, I have two on the outer and two on the inner of these larger beads. So I'm just gonna finish off this last one for a total of five. And these are all the way at the bottom because I think when I do the owl beads, I want them more toward the top. I don't really have a plan. I think I said that already. I just kind of work with it. And usually when I film my DIYs, then you get the sped up version and it looks like I have all this big plan and I really don't. So in this video, I was trying to show you how I, um, you, how my creative process goes, I guess is a good way to put it. They sell these at Walmart for $2.44. You get a ton of them. And um, I bet they're long pens or they have eyes on some of them. Let me get them all out and put my owls on and then I will show you how to apply them to the um, witch bell. Okay, the first thing I did was open the eye um, on the bottom and put a bell on and then squeeze it shut. The next thing I do is stick the little owl on there and then I decide where my placement's going to be. So I'm going to want one of these on the outside and I am going to, nope, not that one because it's already got beads on it. I like to try to use ones that are not already being used. Okay, so, as you can see, I'm slowly applying these. <sighs> I am just going to tell you, putting these on are a pain in the butt, but I already knew that because I've done it numerous times to the other witch bells I've made. It is so freaking difficult to get the thing to wrap around like you want it to, but just keep working at it because you will get it. Now, if you don't have the eye hook um, things like I have, you can use a regular wire to do this that would work too. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of holding this down on the back and then wrapping the wire around the string. Now when you get to a certain point, you just got to kind of clamp it down. Again, I don't know how well you can see what I'm doing here. All of this I learned by trial and error, I'm just going to tell you. I should have watched a video, maybe, on how to do it to make it easier on myself. Okay. Now, I like mine uniform, but some people don't. So you, again, use your own creativeness to decide how you want to place all of your pieces on. But I'm just counting over so many. So this is what it looks like so far. I, I can't tell how hard that is for you to see. So this is this is what it looks like so far. I am not satisfied with the amount of bells and stuff on here, and I'm probably gonna add a few things. And my pack of bells I got, which by the I by the way, they came from Walmart. And they do have small ones, which I will be adding small ones up here and I jump rings. Jeez, the words just wouldn't come out of my mouth today. This is a long video. So I'm going to use these for the small bells. 
and I'm going to use them for the goddess hook. So, okay, so see, I just pushed it right on through. I recentered her, and now I'm just going to go ahead. I know I keep saying I'll be back when it's finished, but then I forgot that I didn't show you something, so I wanted to show you. I opened the eye hook, I went on through, and there it is. I'm probably going to put another one here, and then two on this side, and then we'll have our eight bells, and I how I did that one more time. That way then you know I am using two pair, one smaller pair, one larger pair. Oops. That's like little surgery. <laughs> oh, goodness. My sense of humor is pretty dry, sorry. So this does separate pretty easy, easier than the hemp rope. But see that? I just went right down in the middle. Then I'm going to stick that one on. I'm going to readjust how I'm holding this so that I can get a good grip on the top and just push them together. And I don't know how people get them so perfect at the top because I surely do not. And then I squish them down so that they're holding tight. And then like I said before, I am going to this time go ahead and finish, and then I'll show you the end result. All right, so all my bells are on there. The small ones, I realize there's a lot going on here, but if you just seen this thing in person, it is absolutely gorgeous. All right, guys, that's it. That is our set of witch bells for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll talk soon, which is...